well, this is not April Fool's. It is kind of what we expected, honestly. Kirk Herbstreit coming out in an interview with Pat McAfee and admitting that, yeah, the new college football video game is going to be released in what I would expect probably the second week of July. Maybe sometime around July 12th, July 14th, based on how they previously used to do it and their release schedules when they released Madden. It all coincides with kind of a mid-July release. Personally, I think it'd be awesome if they released the game July 4th, but I do expect probably the second week of July, but Kirk Herbstreit coming out kind of off the cuff in an interview saying, I think it's coming out in July. It makes complete sense. It's what we expected, but I was looking for that confirmation. And again, this is not April Fool's or anything like that. So we should be expecting it in mid-July, which is a couple months from now. And a few things I didn't go over when it comes to this game. You know, people were talking about who's going to be the highest rated players. This is kind of a weird list. Ollie Gordon. I, I understand Ollie Gordon's a, a really nice running back for Oklahoma State. He's the only 99 overall. I, I highly doubt that, but this is just a random list. Travis Hunter at 97. Yeah, it's hard to rank Travis Hunter considering the offense and the defense. Quinn Ewers a 96. Harold Perkins, very nice hybrid linebacker. You know, exactly what you want in kind of a modern day athletic linebacker that can also rush. Shador Sanders, uh, I don't know about Shador, Shador Sanders being a 95. Abuka, a 94. He returned. He'd probably be a late first rounder, early second rounder. I thought he was going to come out uh, this past year. Caleb Downs, I would expect probably to be a 97 or a 98. Daniels from Kansas also there, back along with Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel, really underrated pickup for Oregon. Dylan Gabriel was the best transfer portal QB, but there are just some opinions on that. And then it is April Fool's. So we got a few different college programs, kind of some fun stuff I just wanted to react to. Florida Atlantic coming out and saying, Battle of the Coasts, Friday, November 1st, 8 o'clock, floating in the Atlantic, an aircraft carrier college football game, November 1st, South Florida against FAU. This would be great to see. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense. College basketball does this where they have outdoor games. And college basketball actually has problems with it to where the wind causes the games to be very low scoring whenever they have those games on aircraft carriers. But imagine if this happened, it would be pretty sweet. Of course, it is kind of a safety issue. Although you could put up like fencing and stuff around it. I don't know. Either way, that was funny. And then Duke had the blue field. That looks real. I mean, that looks good. Duke announces updates to playing surface at Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium. And you can see they've got a full made-up little article here. The Blue Devils will install artificial grass on the field beginning in May. The project is estimated to take two months to complete and will debut on Friday, August 30th when they face Elon. So Duke faces Elon to start the season. We would expect them to win that game, of course. I don't know. What do people think of possibly a mod being added to the new college football video game to where you could change the field turf of any team? Like make Ohio State's field red, make Oregon's field like a lime light green. I think it would kind of be an oversaturization. I guess it would be cool, but I, I don't think I would do that, honestly, because it would just be weird. Western Michigan they have a really strange field turf. It's like gray. It makes it appear when you're watching their games like it's in black and white. I don't know why you would want to do that. The Big Ten planning to charge annual membership dues to Rutgers, Northwestern, and Nebraska. See, that's unrealistic. You can't throw in Nebraska. I know it was kind of a funny shot. But if, if they just would have said Rutgers and, and Northwestern, people would have believed it. I mean, Nebraska, I can understand they've been kind of a bad program recently, but based on the how popular they are, obviously Nebraska is a net positive for the Big Ten. Northwestern and Rutgers obviously got great deals, especially Rutgers joining the conference with Maryland when they did, now with all these other teams wanting to join it. I like how they have just a photo of the Big Ten logo, like it's supposed to be serious news. You know how you know, you'll get tweets and then it'll just be like a photo of the helmet with the logo on it because it's serious. It's kind of funny how they did that. But if you throw no Nebraska in there, it's not realistic. I mean, we know it's obviously fake. Everybody knows it's fake anyways. These April 1st things, 
it seems like they happen so much more now. This, you've got the Lake County captains. I, this is not college football, but I thought this was funny. The Lake County captains playing at Cleveland Browns Stadium. Cleveland Browns Stadium becoming multi-purpose. That's not a very good uh, rendering there. You got to make it look more realistic. There's no... You have to bring an extension fence into right field for that to be realistic. It's just a, just a funny thing, I thought, there. The MAC Conference has voted to add Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky would run through the MAC with that offense, the Air Raid. Yeah, that would be awesome if that happened, but... The Mac is adding UMass. I didn't even cover that. Maybe I should cover that right now. The Mac adding UMass. Although there's really not much to talk about. The Mac is not good. And the addition of UMass, it's just not going to do much for the league. I mean, I guess you're adding a team. Although UMass has been one of the worst FBS teams for years now. We understand that. I also wanted to talk about... How about NC State possibly becoming more attractive now because they made... The Final Four, does that help them in terms of conference realignment? They're definitely one of those schools that's kind of, you know, we're 50-50 on what's going to be happening to NC State. Maybe I'll do a separate video on NC State in general, although this was just a rumor. Pittsburgh, Virginia Tech, Louisville, NC State can all join Big 12. I, I, I'm not understanding the incentive there by the Big 12. They would just dilute themselves. Maybe Louis, or excuse me, Louisville. But like Pittsburgh, are they really a net positive for the Big 12? They've already got a bunch of teams in that conference. Again, you're just diluting yourselves by adding more teams unless they can somehow get a really good deal where those teams that would be joining their con the conference, the Big 12, wouldn't be getting the full amount in terms of membership. But then why would they leave? Because they're getting virtually the same uh, it, with this current deal in the ACC. The only way I can see this happening is if the ACC completely implodes in NC State I don't know if them making the Final Four, obviously, it's very shocking. If you look at NC State basketball, it really is remarkable the season that they had. They probably should have finished 18-15 and 15 and not even made the NIT. And then they banked in a three at the buzzer against Virginia, ended up winning the ACC tournament. That's the only way they made the field of 64, and they were an 11 seed as an auto bid because they won a Power Six uh, Conference Championship, but I don't think it really changes much with NC State. It's just kind of a cool thing that they actually made the Final Four, and now there's all this realignment news with them. There's the whole rumor, NC State possibly tied at the hip to North Carolina. Wherever North Carolina goes, is NC State going to be going? I don't think so. I think North Carolina and Duke would be tied at the hip, and I do believe that the Big Ten might be interested in in terms of that basketball rivalry, the other thing that's important to note, both North Carolina and Duke are not horrible at football. Now, obviously, if they join the Big Ten, they would, they would probably be worse because the ACC right now is not great in football, and both of those teams could kind of win some games here and there. Duke last year had Riley Leonard. He got injured. They had the big win to start off the season. What was that against Clemson? The upset win there. And North Carolina, they've had some teams, you know, decent recruiting, in-state recruiting is good in North Carolina. Drake may, obviously. Uh, but in general, it'll be interesting to see what happens to NC State. I don't think NC State's going to be joining the Big Ten or the SEC, but we will see. Either way, guys, that is just the update on the college football video game. I would expect probably like July 12th, maybe July 14th, if I had to throw out a date on when it's going to be released. But it should be released in early to mid-July, which will basically give us about a month and a half to play the game. And obviously, you can uh, people are still going to be playing the game after the start of the season. But I'm just saying in terms of the offseason, you're going to get the rest of July and basically all of August. I don't know when week zero is this year. It might be a little bit later. I mean, not that week zero really matters a ton, but it is. it does mark the start of the college football season. Either way, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.